The end of console generations is something that has been speculated on for a long time, and it looks like Microsoft thinks that end is nearing. In an interview with Engadget, head of Xbox marketing Aaron Greenberg had this to say about console generations. Quote, For us, we think the future is without console generations. We think that the ability to build a library, a community, to be able to iterate with the hardware we're making, a pretty big bet on that with Project Scorpio. We're basically saying this isn't a new generation, everything you have continues forward and it works. We think of this as a family of devices. But we'll see. We're going to learn from this. We're going to see how it goes. So far, I'd say based on reaction, there appears to be a lot of demand and interest around Project Scorpio, and we think it's going to be a pretty big success, end quote. So by the wording, Microsoft isn't abandoning the console market at all, but it looks like they are shifting how things are done. In the past, the console would release, it would be good for four to five years, sometimes more, and then we'd have the next generation, the next iteration. Now with the success of PC gaming and that providing the option for consistent hardware upgrades, Upgrades, but having parity in terms of game library, Microsoft seems to be following a similar style by implementing that into consoles. Sony is also doing the same thing with the PlayStation 4 Neo. But the Neo and the Scorpio are expected to feature the same games as the previous consoles did, but with substantial performance upgrades and other features that haven't been exactly clarified at this point. For anyone to think this suggests the end of consoles is foolish, but rather what it does suggest is an evolution. If Scorpio and Neo are successful, and at this point it looks like they will be, you can expect Microsoft and Sony to continue with this pattern. Instead of generational leaps every four or five or six years, they can do console upgrades every two or three years. And at the end of the day, you really can't complain about it since the older models will still be available to purchase, at least that's the speculation, and they will still be able to run every game, albeit at a less optimal state. But for those that want the cheaper option, it'll be there, and chances are when Neo and Scorpio hit the market, it'll drive the price of the current Xbox One and the PS4 models even lower. But the question now becomes if this does become the new formula that Microsoft and Sony adopts, at some point the Xbox One and PS4 will not be able to run newer games and both Sony and Microsoft will have to come to terms with saying, alright guys, if you have the old consoles, you gotta upgrade or else you're not playing the newest games, but that's not gonna happen for years down the line. And there's nothing wrong with that, nothing is really changing except console gamers are getting more options and if you have the disposable income to upgrade your console, you'll have a better console gaming experience and if not, you can buy one console every four to five years, which is the case right now anyway. Sure, it might suck to see a friend gaming on the PS4 Neo while you're still on the PS4, but that is how all other forms of technology work. PC gamers are very used to this. We're getting new video cards every one to two years, and there are pretty big performance differences every generation of video cards. You have to be aware of that when buying any kind of technology. Tech always evolves. There's always going to be better iterations of products released. It's just that consoles have always been married to the idea of we have a console for this set amount of years and then it's on to the next generation. Sure, that formula has worked, don't get me wrong, even to this day the PlayStation 4 is a powerhouse in terms of its commercial success, but you can also tell that a lot of enthusiasts are getting tired of seeing PC games running so much better than on consoles that doing more frequent upgrades will bridge that gap. I don't expect there to be PlayStations and Xboxes coming out that cost a thousand dollars, but I could very well see Sony and Microsoft charging five hundred dollars or even six hundred dollars for the brand new consoles, because the key is now they have that flexibility. In the past, you couldn't charge that kind of money for your console because you would usually only have one model out. And some people just aren't willing to pay that $500 or $600. But now you'll have different SKUs that differ in performance and everybody is going to have an option. If you only want to spend $300 or $400 on a console, you can buy the older models and chances are they might be even cheaper than $300. But if you're the enthusiast that wants to buy a console and you want the best performance possible, then you have the option to pay the extra money to get better performance. I don't see anything wrong with that. But what's even more interesting is that the Xbox One commercially has been getting obliterated by the PS4. That's not to say the Xbox One is doing bad sales-wise, but they are far behind Sony's console. This may have been the impetus for Microsoft to begin bringing their games to PC in an attempt to make the Xbox brand a more unified platform branching from consoles, computers, laptops, phones, tablets, etc. So if anyone is gonna be getting out of the console market, it would be Microsoft. But even then, they still have the Scorpio coming, and there's no reason for them to abandon consoles at this point. And Sony has no worries at all. The PS4 is looking to be as or close to the popularity of the PS2. The games are selling extremely well, and overall, it's a big success. They also have PlayStation VR coming out, which can greatly expand the PS4's user base. They're doing great, and to even suggest the fact they are leaving console market is hilarious, really. So in closing, yes, the idea of console generations may be going away, but that's not a bad thing. In reality, it's a pretty dated formula, and while it works, 
works, it does have its limitations. Upgrading consoles more frequently will give gamers more options, and it'll give some of that allure of PC gaming over to consoles, which is a great thing. So what do you think? Are you excited for the possibilities of new consoles already, or are you content with your PS4 or Xbox One? Comment your thoughts down below. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Thank you.